Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a system of equations. If you liked the video, please comment, like, and subscribe, and hit the bell button for notifications. And let's get started. Now, this is a polynomial system with three unknowns. But what makes this equation, or what makes the system more interesting, is that A, B, C are given numbers, and we're supposed to solve for X, Y, and Z. So, A, B, C are basically parameters. This makes guessing almost impossible. I mean, if I gave you numerical values for ABC, you could kind of guess and check if there are integer solutions, so on and so forth. That's why I kind of picked this problem, and this is more like a more general type of problem. And in the near future, I'm planning to do another version of this problem, which is also very cool, but a little different. So this is what I'd like to do. There are three equations. I'd like to start with the first one, and I want to take the first equation and square it. Okay, and then from the square of the first equation, you probably notice that uh, these terms are quadratic on the left-hand side. So y z is quadratic, x squared is quadratic. So that also allows us to look at this equation uh, in a different way, but that's not the method that I'm going to uh, pursue. So I'd like to square the first equation, and this makes sense from that perspective as well. And then from this, I'm going to subtract the second equation, times the third equation. Now, you might be asking, like, why am I doing this, right? Well, first of all, I'm doing this because it makes sense, but that's there's something more interesting about this method is that notice how we are applying the, the mentality in each equation. Like, so look at the first equation, for example. It's x squared minus yz. So x is multiplied by itself, and then two other variables are multiplied together, and we're subtracting that. And we're doing the same thing here, but just treating each equation as a single variable. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. Therefore, the right-hand side of this equation is going to be a squared minus bc. Make sense? Now, notice that the first equation is x squared minus yz, and our result here is a squared minus bc. So there seems to be something, some type of relationship between those things. But... Moreover, uh, actually, there's more to this equation. When you do this, in a way, this makes sense because, first of all, notice that y squared, z squared cancels out right away. And the resulting equation is going to be nice, and we'll see why in a little bit, okay? So let me go ahead and expand this because what I'd like to do is I'd like to show you what this looks like, and then hopefully we can take that and generalize. Okay, cool. Well, this is already too general, but anyways. So if you square the first one, you're going to be getting x to the fourth minus 2x squared yz plus y squared z squared. And from this, I'm supposed to subtract uh, y squared z squared. So what we can do is, in terms of saving time, we could probably just multiply these and subtract. Everything will be negated. Just remember that. And now we're going to multiply y squared by negative xy, which is going to give us negative xy cubed. But with the negative sign, it's just going to be a positive xy cubed. So I'm going to write it that way. And then I'll have the negative xz cubed, but that's negated again. So that becomes positive xz cubed. And finally, I multiply xz by xy, which gives me positive x squared yz, but it's going to be negative x squared yz at the end because of the negative sign. And of course, this is equal to a squared minus bc. Alrighty, cool. Now, First of all, notice that, and I think we already mentioned it, the uh, y squared, oops, I wrote it as y squared, z squared, that was a mistake. That's not a plus sign. It's supposed to be a multiplication sign. All right, cool. So this is supposed to be y squared, z squared. So these two terms cancel out. Nice. And these two are like terms. Notice that. So what we can do is we can actually subtract those. That's going to give us negative 3x squared yz, but... I'd like to write this one first, okay? And then everything else, uh, like this one next and this one third. So it's gonna look like this. X to the fourth plus XY cubed plus XZ cubed. And then I have minus three X squared YZ is equal to A squared minus BC. Nice. Now, why is this nice first of all? Uh, notice that these two terms have a common factor, x, but not only that, actually all the terms on the left-hand side has a common factor. And what is that common factor? 
it's x. Okay, so we're going to take the x out. And when we take the x out, very interesting things happen. You'll see in a little bit. And then, like I said earlier, we're going to generalize this. So when I take the x out, I get something real nice inside the parentheses because I get x cubed plus y cubed, right? Plus z cubed minus, because I took out one of the x's, 3xyz. So it's kind of like a nice expression and well, you'll probably recognize this because we talked about this before. This came up in other videos, right? And this is kind of like a, something that is factorable and one of the factors is going to be x plus y plus z. But that's not what we need. We're going to do it in a more interesting way. But anyways, this just popped up. And what is this supposed to mean? So I took the first equation, squared it, and the other two equations I multiplied together and subtracted from the square of the first equation. Now, if you do this to all the equations, like kind of like pick any of these equations, like let's say the second one, right? Square it, so let's take that. If I take y squared minus xz, if I square it, and from it if I subtract x squared minus yz, and z squared minus xy, you know that this is going to equal b squared minus ac. And as a result, because we got this one, right? Let me go ahead and kind of highlight it, right, for you. So we got this one from the squaring the first equation. The By taking the second equation, you're going to be getting something very similar to this, but it's just going to look like this. It's going to look like y times x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed minus 3xyz is equal to b squared minus ac. All right, awesome. So by squaring the second equation and subtracting the product of the first and the third, we got this something that looks like the first one. Now, if you do, the, do this to the third equation, in other words, if you take the third one and square it, and from that square, if you subtract the product of the first equation and the second equation, right? You should be getting c squared minus ab. And obviously, this should give you something like the other equations, but you're going to have the z outside instead of y, because every time whatever variable you squared, that should be on the outside. And you can test this. I'm not, not doing it because I don't want to take too long with this. And you'll get the idea if you do the math here. You should be getting the same thing. All right? Awesome. So what we got here is actually remarkable because we got this, we got this, and we got that. Now, why are these equations so awesome? Let's talk about that. Well, these equations are really awesome because they have the same expression inside the parentheses. So x times something, and then y times the same thing, and then z times the same thing. Make sense? And the right-hand side is a constant because a, b, c are given numbers. I mean, we don't know what they are, but they could be any number you want. a could be 1, b could be 3, c could be 10, even 0. It could be, they could be any numbers. doesn't matter. That's why we're solving this in the general case. Okay, hopefully this makes sense. Now, I'm going to put it together. Well, this is still not too easy, but actually it's easier than the original one because we got something in common, all right? So there are many ways to proceed about this. You know, you can divide uh, first in the second equation and then get something from there, which is kind of like a ratio of x to y ratio, and then you can get the y to z ratio and then use that in the original problem and then so on and so forth. But that's not what I like to do. What I'd like to do is, I'd like to call this expression inside the parentheses something. Since I'm going to be dividing, let me just show you the case for x, and then hopefully you can expand it. So x is going to look like, basically, when I do the math, a squared minus bc divided by x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed minus 3xyz. Well, we still haven't been able to find x numerically because we still have variables on both sides, but that doesn't matter. What matters is that I can call this expression something, okay? Then uh, I can just go ahead and find the solutions very easily. So this is what I like to do, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and call this expression 
1 over k. The reason why I don't call that k is because I don't want to deal with fractions and it's okay if it's a fraction in the first place. Now, what is this going to look like when I do this replacement? Well, then x is going to look like a squared minus bc multiplied by k. Then y is going to look like b squared minus ac times k because they all have the same uh, multiplier, right? And then z is going to be c squared minus ab multiplied by k. This is real cool because what you can do is now we were able to express basically every uh, variable x, y, z as a multiple of um, the basically the same thing. Okay, they're all multiples of k in other words. Nice. So now go back to the original and then consider the first equation. What was the first original problem? The first equation in the original problem. It was x squared minus yz is equal to a, right? Now, what I can do is I can substitute these. Isn't that awesome? Yep, that's going to be nice. So what I can do is I can replace x with this, a squared minus bc multiplied by k, and then I'm going to square it, and then minus y, which is going to be b squared minus ac multiplied by k, and then I'll just multiply that by z, which is c squared minus ab times k. Great. Now, how is this going to help us? It's going to help us a great deal because k squared is going to cancel out. Isn't that beautiful? Okay. Well, how is that going to help us? Well, it's not necessarily going to cancel out. I shouldn't say that uh, because I thought it as an equation, but you can take out k squared. Okay, let's do it. So we get a squared minus bc times k squared minus b squared minus ac will be multiplied by c squared minus ab. And then k times k is k squared, and this is equal to a. Okay, not a squared, a. Awesome. Now, what am I supposed to do? I pull out the k squared, right? And then here's one thing that I'd like to ask you, and this should be squared as well. Well, remember, we've done this before, right? If you take the first equation, it was in terms of x, y, z, but if you do the same thing here, you square that and subtract that product, what are you, what are you gonna be getting, right? You should have the a on the outside, right? And then inside the parentheses, you should have a cubed plus b cubed. Okay, that's just gonna bug me, you know that. b cubed plus, okay, I don't know what's going on there. I just can't write a three. c cubed minus three a b c. You know that, right? We've gotten this before. So that multiplied by k squared is gonna equal a. Therefore, from here, we can basically find the value of k, right? And then we can find the value of x, y, and z. But notice that how the same stuff keeps coming up, right? It just keeps popping up. Like we had an equation and then we used it to transform this system to another one. And then again, we see the same thing like a squared minus bc, the same type of pattern we keep seeing. That's kind of interesting, don't you think? Okay, cool. Now from here, I'm going to isolate k squared. And obviously here, a is gonna cancel out which is cool, and k squared is going to equal 1 over, you know, this expression here, right? 1 over a cubed plus b cubed plus c cubed minus 3abc. So this was our goal, basically, right? But this is k squared. Now, okay, let's go back to this one now. x is equal to what? x is equal to a squared minus bc multiplied by k. Now, a squared minus bc is considered a constant, and k is a constant too. Why? Because as you can see here, a, b, c are constants, so k is a constant as well. But we got to take the square root first. So let's go ahead and take the square root of both sides. And this should give us a cubed plus b cubed plus c cubed minus 3a, b, c under the radical and the reciprocal of that. Now, since x can be written as a squared minus b, c times k, now I can go ahead and write down each value of x, y, and z. And then with that, we should be done. Okay, let's go on and finish it up. So from here, x is going to equal a squared minus bc divided by the square root of a cubed plus b cubed plus c cubed minus 3abc. This is my x value. And the y value is going to be b squared minus ac all over the square root of a cubed plus b cubed plus c cubed minus 3abc. And finally, z is going to be c squared minus ab all over 
the square root of a cubed plus b cubed plus c cubed minus 3abc. So basically, these are going to be my solutions, okay? So let me go ahead and put those that way. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this one. And until then, take care and bye-bye.